What's up guys, Joe Rock here with our 20th Xamarin Android tutorial. And in the previous tutorial, what we worked on was creating a contact and inserting it into our SQL Server database, okay? So just to recall, we have a dialog fragment that comes in and asks for the contact's information, just the name and number. And now it will insert that into our database, okay? So just to check on that. And we'll refresh this and then here is the contact that we just created okay so that is now inserting into our database to later be retrieved all right so the next thing we're going to work on in this tutorial is actually the image and the image right now is null by default when the contact is created so we need to do an update on the image when we when we actually uh pick an image for our contact okay so that's already being done if we click on our image it'll throw this into our list view into the image view and right now it's in the back end it's basically it's it's inserting the image file into our database okay so let me go ahead and show you that notice how now we have data inside of our image column okay and this is what's what we're going to be working on in this tutorial is how to insert this image into our sql server database using uh xamarin android as a client and then php for the back end okay so let's go ahead and get started on that, guys. Let me just close out of that. All right, so recall that in the onActivityResult method that this gets called when the gallery is closed. So when the user actually clicks on a picture in their gallery, this closes and it'll call this method automatically, okay? And then in that method is where we actually do whatever we need to do. Of course, right now we're just setting the image bitmap to update our UI to show the user that, okay, the image view has been has been updated. Okay, so, and that's all that's doing and it's using a scaled down version. And this is all stuff that we did in the previous tutorials. If you guys are jump, just jumping in right now, check out the previous tutorials where we actually scale down the image and, and set it and I go, go through all that stuff, okay? So, now in this tutorial, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be wanting to insert the image into our database, all right? So, we already have our stream ready to go and that's pulling in from the URI which is just the image URI so that's what that's from what that's coming from and that's coming from our intent so we grab a stream from that okay and we use that stream to create our bitmap okay and this is going to be the bitmap that's from uh, the, the raw data okay so it's not going to be our scaled down bitmap it's going to be the full scale bitmap okay so this is going to be what takes care of all of this you know the UI and, and so that it's memory efficient. We're not putting the whole thing in a little thumbnail and we're, in, we're being efficient about it. But this is going to, to use the native image, okay? So we wanna open up a new stream, set it and create our bitmap, which we've just done. The next thing we wanna do is we want to, to instantiate a memory stream, okay? Call it memory stream. And with that memory stream, we're gonna feed it some data, okay? some compressed data. So we're going to compress the image and it wants a compressed format, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Do bitmap, compressed format. And you can do PNG, you can do JPEG, and you can play around with these with these certain, this certain compressed formats. But I'm gonna use Web, WebP, which uh, seems a little more versatile, okay? And we wanna shoot for max quality, which is 100, all right? And then finally, we want to uh, send it our memory stream, okay? So this is the actual where the data is going to go. The compressed image is going to go into our memory stream that we just created over here, okay? So now what we want to do is we actually want to create a byte array, okay? So this is really important. This is what we're actually going to send up to the server is a byte array, all right? And the way we get our byte array is from the memory stream, and we just do two array, okay? So now it takes the memory stream and it puts into a byte array format. And now we have our our image, okay? So now a, a lot like the, the previous tutorial, what we're gonna be using is a web client to update our contact, all right? So let's make a web client, call it client equals new web client. Then we're gonna make a URI equals new URI, HTTP. And once again, this is my IP address, okay, on my LAN. 
and yours might differ i'm using a different server but once again you might be able to, you might use a different server uh, you might be using your own actual computer just your local host in which you'll want to specify that so wherever wherever you can get to this file okay and i'm calling it update contact dot php and then now like just like in the previous tutorial again we're going to want to make some parameters all right so that's what we use the name value collection for all right which is just holds uh key value pairs all right and then we just want to add some key value pairs okay and this is going to co correspond to the update contact.php which i'll attach this below and just like the previous tutorial with the create contact this is very similar we just have some post variables the image file which is going to be a uh, base64 encoded by array contact ID so what contact to update and we're going to do that by ID just grab grab the grab them put them into variables make a connection and we're going to decode it the image data okay so remember we're going to encode it right now over in the client and we're going to decode it here and we do that base64 encoding and decoding because some stuff can get get uh, compromised or, or basically you know the the encoding or the uh, the file the byte array if it's just a raw data it can get it can get confused when it's going through the wire and uh it can get confused with some other stuff and it can jack up the data so it's a good just habit to to base 64 encode or some kind of encoding to do to put it through the wire or the internet and uh decode it on the actual server that you're gonna you're gonna put it into the database okay we're going to put the database uh the the image file into the database okay so i hope that makes sense but just remember we want to base64 encode it before we send it and we want to decode it after we once we receive it and before we insert it into our database okay so now once we get that we're just going to query it, and it's just a simple query where we update the contacts and we this is very important we want to convert to a var binary max okay and this is going to be our parameter which is going to be image data and our contacts ID, which is going to be the contact ID, okay. And these are ordered in the in the basically in just the the uh, in the order that they appear here, okay. So that's going to set up some parameters. We're going to execute the parameter or the the query, and that's going to be it. We're just going to send a successful or query failed if it, if it's not okay. And then you can put anything here and then check for that on the client. And we're not going to do that here, but you get you get the idea of, of what we're trying to do here, okay. So that's all that's doing here and one thing I do want to note is the image file if we actually go in here and we go into the design of the context table you'll see that our image is a var binary max okay so it's not an image file uh, data type which Microsoft kind of deprecated that now with the image they would like you to use var binary and you don't if you don't know the specified size use max which in this case the size will, will differ so we're going to use max and that's that's basically the data type to use now for images in SQL Server. Okay, and it's pretty it's pretty easy to use and pretty straightforward. You basically just want to send it um, some a byte array, and it'll take care of the rest for you. Okay, so just want to note that that's the data type I'm using to store my images on SQL Server. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of the PHP now, and we got to go back to our, our client. And we want to add some key value pairs, okay? And this is going to correspond to image and contact IDs, okay? So we want to make sure that this is exact how we state it here, all right? So image, that's the key. And the value is going to be a base64 encoded byte array, all right? So .NET has a convert class, and it has a static method called base to base64 string. Okay, and we want us to give it our byte array, all right? And that's perfect because that's what it takes. And that's our pick data, all right? The next thing we want to do is we want to add our contact ID. ID. And this is so that it knows what contact to update, okay? Contact uh, ID to string. We don't we don't have that have this yet so let me go ahead and add that okay so 
we don't yet have our contact. So we have the image view, but right now we don't know what contact is selected, okay? We, we know, but in the code, we don't know. So how, how, do we re, how do we fetch the contact that was just selected, okay? So that's a little bit of a problem, and that's always something that you wanna make sure that, you know, keep track of, you know, cause it, it's not, this isn't a click event, right? It's not clicking, it's just getting called once it's clicked before. So we wanna make sure that we keep track of what picture is being selected. I hope that makes sense right now. We, we just don't know, you know, we could have a thousand uh, contacts. What contact is is basically uh, clicked, okay? So we, we have our contact list over here, right? But we don't know the position that it was clicked on. We don't know which contact, okay? So just an easy way to keep track of that is actually over here, we wanna come back to our contact list adapter, okay? So this is actually where the, where the views and the rows get populated, okay? And in this, this is our pick. So this is our actual picture. And by default, if it's null, it'll, it'll just, if it's not null, then it'll put the image bitmap, which they're all gonna be null right now by default. And it's just gonna have the little icon, the little person icon right here, okay? So this is our actual picture for each row, okay? So then what we can do is do pick.tag. And we used this method before, or this, this, this kind of procedure before with tag. And tag is just, just basically, uh, that it just holds an object. So you can literally just put whatever in it. And that's really helpful sometimes. And I use, I try to use it all the time. Sometimes I forget and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna use tag. So I wanna tag it, this image view, this specific image view, I wanna tag it with the position that it's associated with, okay? So this is an integer and I get the position. So this is the position of the contact and I wanna tag the image view with that. So that, that keeps track of it, okay? So think of like tagging it, just tag it later on to be used, you know, just like you tag anything. You, I'm gonna tag something so that later on I know where it belongs to, okay? And that's all we're doing here. So that's now, now that's, that's tagged, we can come back over here and we can, we can really just come into here and we can do, we can get our uh, contact ID. And the way we do that now is we do contact ID and we have our M contacts, which is just our list of contacts, okay? We want to cast it to an integer because the tag is an object, so we need to let it know that it is, it's really of integer type. And the M selected pick, remember, is the current pick that, that we selected. And because we tagged all of them, we tagged all of our pictures with the contact ID, that's going to have our, our that's gonna be our, con, our uh, position, okay? And then we just do ID. So now this is our whole contact right here, all right? The current contact that we are updating its image view with, and we wanna get its ID. Okay, so now we have the contact ID, which I wrote down here already, contact ID to string. Okay, so this will update, this will send the appropriate contact ID because we've tagged all of the images with them. All right, so it's a really helpful way just to kinda throw stuff in there and, and keep track of what's going on and make sure that we, we, we have the right images with, that are associated with the right contacts. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Um, just like I said, just think about like tagging, like you tag a cow or you tag, you know, you, you tag a, you tag a, a cow on their ear or, or you're on an animal or something. And that way, when you later come back to them, you know, who, what the, whose owner is this, you know, what, what, uh, what, uh, the owner of, of this cow or this animal or something like that, you know, and that just popped up in my head. I don't, I don't know why I thought about tagging animals, but, uh, just think about that and it might help you remember, you know the the reason why we why we do that and it's really helpful so just like in the real world when we tag stuff we want to reference them later okay so next thing we want to do is like we did in the last tutorial is the upload values a sync okay and we send it the URL or the URI I'm sorry and the parameters okay so that's actually going to execute the query all right the last thing we want to do is we want to register or subscribe to the uploads values completed event. All right. The way you do that is just a normal way. And all we want to do here is we just want to actually just print out successful or print out whatever the PHP is echoing. You don't have to do this right now, but it's kind of a good way to make sure that if your PHP is screwing up or you don't really know what's going on, you're trying to just troubleshoot it and to see what, where it's stopping or or where it's failing, or if it did, if it did succeed, then this is a good way to just to really check really quick. And then remember to do that is 
do uh, encoding, UTF-8, UTF the get string, and then e.result is the byte array, what's returned. And then just for good practice, we want to make sure that we run this on the UI thread, all right? The way we do that is like so. We'll semicolon there. And we'll put this line of code inside of our action, okay? So that should be all good and done. And let's make sure that this is working properly, all right? So let's go ahead and run this. Pull up our database. Let me go ahead and uh, pull this up. So this is the, the contact that we created in the beginning of the tutorial. Let's come back over here. All right, so this is our finished product and let's make sure that everything is working the way it should. So we'll do call it test image and one, two, three, or two, three, three, whatever. Create contact. Okay, so let's make sure that the contact was created. All right, and the image view is null by default. Select our image. All right, so that should have updated on the back end, okay? And we'll go ahead and verify that here. All right, there it is. Cool. All right, so and that is how you update or you send an image to a SQL Server database, okay? So now in the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to have a, all these contacts that we're creating. We'll create a few contacts on our server, and we're actually going to want we're going to we're going to pull in the data as soon as the activity loads. Okay, so on load, we'll no longer have to create an activity every time. We we'll already have our previous activities already loaded. Okay, so we'll go into that and we'll 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 look at uh, probably some JSON and that's going to be uh, something that's really really useful with any application is is taking PHP and and put it into an array and then finally encoded it into JSON and in the client on over here is where we'll actually decode it or deserialize the JSON using a really cool library that I'll show you guys and it makes it really simple and then with that that's when we can uh, load in the data with because with the uh, with the adapter, okay? Because so right now we're just we just have contacts, which is actually just empty, and that's why we have to add a contact every time because it's in memory. So what we'll do is we'll instantiate that JSON now with the contacts, and then we'll feed it into our adapter once it's done, and then all your all your contacts will will become back and will be will be instantiated now from the server. All right, so exciting stuff, guys. Uh, you know, some really use, useful stuff that I think that you'll probably use in your everyday applications that you guys are building. So Stay tuned. In the next tutorial, we'll, we'll work on all that stuff. And I hope from this tutorial, you guys uh, got this kind of the gist of everything that's going on. Once again, feel free to to put some comments below if you're having any trouble with PHP and, and, and SQL Server. And I know that it's it's uh, can be a little tricky sometimes. If you've got one thing wrong, everything just blows up, you know? So uh, feel free and I'll do my best to, to write back and to you know, get you guys up and running with, with the imaging. Okay. Thanks for watching guys.